And this is all like fairly common sense stuff. It's not super hard to understand. And you'll get very used to it the more that you ride, but you have to actually ride to figure this stuff out. It's a smidge windy, so I hope the dead cat is doing its job. I made a video a while back on riding just in general, how to, you know, your how to clutch, how to shift, all that stuff. I wanted to make another one on traffic because I think that's something entirely different. Um, and there's a lot more things that go into it than just, you know, being able to ride well and smoothly. So once you're actually on the road, things become a good bit different. You have a million other things you need to worry about and things to keep in mind. Before I say anything else, this isn't a replacement for, you know, an MSF course or anything like that. There's plenty of things I don't do right and plenty of things people will shit on me for, but this is just how I ride and, you know, knock on carbon. I haven't gotten into a crash yet. First thing, lane positioning. You'll notice on a bike, you have three different lane positions. I could be in this right side of the lane, I could be in the middle, or I could be on the left. The place you wanna avoid is gonna be the middle part of the lane. Hello, neutral. Reason being, in the middle part of the lane, you see it's a little darker. That's because, you know, when cars are driving on it, they're dropping oil, shit like that. That's where you're most likely to uh, slip. Especially when it starts to rain or get wet. So avoid that. I kind of like to be on the left side of the lane purely f because I have more escape paths, right? If I'm on the right side of the lane next to that curb, I have less options of places to go. If somebody creeps up behind me and I don't like it or whatever, it's just less, less places to move. Hello, officer. Wonder what he doing. But if I'm staying right on this left side, you know, I have more room on this side. I have a decent amount of room on this side. As long as a car doesn't come up next to me. With that comes speed. I like to go just a little bit faster than the flow of traffic um, just because when you go a little bit faster you aren't hanging out in people's blind spots you're not contributing as much to traffic um, biggest thing is just people don't see you they don't know you're there so if I'm hanging out right in this guy's blind spot he's not gonna see me I don't mind going a little bit slower than him especially because I'm in the right lane he's in the left and we're you know hitting all these lights but generally if you're in an area with a little bit less traffic lights, um, I will stay a little bit faster than the flow of traffic. And again, I think the biggest piece of advice that comes with everything, you know, traffic wise, is just understanding that people aren't going to see you. Drivers don't pay attention They're on their phones, You've got drunk drivers, all that shit. So when I'm coming up to this car behind me, you know, it might be a little bit hard to tell on GoPro, but I'm really trying to stay on the right side of the lane. I'm sorry, the left side of the lane, excuse me. Because uh, I don't want to be planted right behind them. If somebody creeps up behind me, that becomes sketchy on my end. Because I got a curb there, and I got a car right in front of me. Less place for me to, you know, scoot out and zip between cars if I need to. I also see the comment of... Uh, don't ride on the white stripes and yeah you shouldn't but this has kind of saved my ass a lot I had a few times where I slipped on some gravel or ice or water or oil or whatever because I kind of panicked when that happened if you notice you're about to eat a pothole like that and you see it last like obviously try to avoid those things early but if you see them 
you know, slippery surfaces, potholes, bumps, whatever, just go over it smoothly. You don't need to freak out because when you make a really quick movement, you're already susceptible to getting yourself hurt or crashing or whatever. But if you just kind of take it nice and smooth, less chance of that happening. You'll also notice I'm trying to keep a good following distance with the cars in front of me. Following distance is a, is a big deal. Um, you have a little bit less stopping power on a bike, in my opinion. Some people will say otherwise. You know, you can have the best brakes in the world, but you only got two wheels. They have four. So, trying to kind of stay or keep a good space cushion is important, right? You know, I don't want to be too bunched up next to this car because if a car behind me hits me and I go flying, I don't want to be squished between those two cars. And I mean, if a car comes and hits me up from behind, I'm probably getting hit anyways, or I'm probably getting smushed anyways, but I want to try to avoid that. Again, I have kind of that open path right there to, you know, act as an escape route. In this case, I have a you know, a right side, I could be on the right side of the lane too. That's perfectly cool. Um, I just like being a little bit further from the curb. I'm more comfortable splitting between these cars than I am trying to ride on the side, you know? On the right side of the road, or really on the edges of any road, that's where you're going to run into those things like gravel. You know, gravel, water, all the shit that gets kicked out from the cars in these lanes goes right over there because it doesn't really have anywhere to go on the left side but it has you know a shoulder to go on the right so you know don't hang out next to shoulders I don't like to do it next thing gears what gear should you be in um, I mean obviously you can hear it I just go based off sound when you're in a higher gear or I'm sorry when you're in a lower gear with higher rpms you have a little bit more response um, a little bit more engine brake if you just totally cut the throttle let's say I cut it right there you know if I'm in a higher gear I have to downshift I have to do a little bit more to slow down whereas if I'm in a lower gear with a higher rpm like this it it's debatable how good it is for the engine but it's less that I have to do if something were to happen and I need to you know stop quick or I need to you know get out of the way or whatever so keep that in mind it's okay to ring your bike out a little bit as long as we're talking about engine braking I have a bike with a lot of engine brake so it's kind of my preferred way of slowing down um, as opposed to using a shitload of brake you know front brake or rear the only issue with it is that people can't see that you're slowing down. There's no indication of it. There are, I, I did see a few years back, they're making like some helmets that have stuff that'll, sh you know, just has a motion sensor in it and a light on the back of the helmet that'll show when you're slowing down so that people can see that, which is super cool. I just tap my rear brake a little bit. Um, I don't like tapping my front brake. You know, if you slip out, if I tap it too hard or whatever, I'm okay with losing the rear which like me tapping my rear brake isn't gonna do, but if I do lose the rear, I'm a little bit more okay with that than I am losing my front. So like right there, slowed down with my engine brake a lot, cut off a ton of speed, but I'm tapping my rear brake to let the dude know behind me that I'm slowing down. Another cool thing about hanging out on either the left or right side of the lane is that people can see you better with their mirrors so they know that there's a bike behind them. Um, you know, if I can see that lady driving right there, she can see me. I'm not saying she will see me, but she can. Um, whereas if I'm just standing right in the middle, there's all this oil and shit right there, I don't want to hang out on that. But if I stay on the right, I'm avoiding the oil. The driver can see me a little bit better. And I have an escape path right here. I got two whole lanes where I can move if I need to. Another quick, easy kind of tip is, you know, so like right here, 
actually, right here. You know, I got a curb to the left of me, but I have an open lane to the right of me. Now, there might be a car coming up in that right lane, but I can at the least try to go this way. I can't really try to go that way. There's nowhere to go. After a little while, it starts to just become second nature. You know, right here, I'm probably a little bit too close to this lady. I might slow down a little bit, but I'm also in the left lane, right? So I don't want to piss off the guy behind me and make him tailgate me because I'm going too slow in the left lane, right? So it's kind of a balance of these things. Cracks like that, don't go over them. If you have to, go over them quick and smooth. You don't want your front tire getting stuck in there. That's, that's a bad day. So now right here is a little bit interesting. I'm gonna kind of move to my left side of the lane, but there's this line right here of oil or a crack in the road or whatever. And I really don't want to be behind this van. So again, just scoot over, right? And again, I'm trying to go a little bit faster so I'm not hanging out in people's blind spots, right? If I sit next to this Accord right here and I stay right here, he's not gonna fucking see me. Also, when you're at a stoplight, right? I'll throw it into neutral. I'm chilling. You know, if I if it's in neutral and you're on a hill or something, the bike will start to roll away. So I just kind of keep my foot tapped on that rear brake. And that keeps you from going anywhere until you put it in gear and go. And this is all like fairly common sense stuff. It's not super hard to understand. And you'll get very used to it the more that you ride. But you have to actually ride to figure this stuff out. I'll be honest, I'm not great at signaling. The way I see it, if I got plenty of space and nobody's there, nobody's hauling ass up behind me, I'm good, you know? The likelihood that people see the blinkers on your bike anyways are pretty slim. Now, intersections. Intersections always give me a little bit of anxiety. I don't want to rush through them. Um, you know, even if my head isn't turning, I'm scanning an intersection with my eyes left to right, you know, so I can see if anybody's gonna run that red, or at least I can try to see, you know, you're not always gonna be able to see the future and shit happens, but luckily I've, I've never had an issue at an intersection. The only issues I've ever had riding were really uh, my own deal. So again, as I'm coming up here to this intersection, it is a little bit nice that there's a few cars in front of me because I don't like being the first person going through an intersection. The likelihood that somebody runs that light and I'm going through it is not zero. If somebody hits somebody in a car, I'm a little bit distanced from that, per se. And there's more time for somebody to see that the light is red. You know, it doesn't always happen where somebody runs a red light that's been red for a while. Usually, you know, people try to gun it because they don't want to miss it. And that's when, you know, that first line of traffic that goes through the intersection, that's when they get hit by the person that ran the red. I think just kind of a general practice is trying to stay aware and stay focused. It's very easy to kind of zone out and stop paying attention but you gotta really you know keep an eye on a lot of different things if this dude in this ford wants to decides he wants to be in this lane you know and i was rolling up just like i just did i'm fucked that's why i think when you're first learning to ride and you're riding in traffic uh not having music is really nice if you have music going it, <laughs> I don't know, when you're first starting, it gets distracting. You're already new to this and you're in a really dangerous scenario because you don't have a whole lot of skill yet. When I first started riding, like I didn't ride with music for the first six months or so because I wanted to be able to hear the bike and feel the bike and understand, you know, when I need to shift and be able to pay attention to all these things. If I'm vibing out to music, it's, it's a lot harder um, when you're learning that stuff. So again, as I'm making that right turn, I'm looking to see if anybody's gonna run that red. 
so that I could stop or I can go and I can just gun it and try to get away from that as quickly as possible because sometimes you'll get stuck in a situation where if you stop, you're gonna get hit. I'm not gonna act like I have all the answers or I know all the rules um, to this stuff because at the end of the day, I'm, you know, I'm not a uh, expert, you know, that's been doing this for 20, 30 years, whatever. Uh, these are just the things that I do to keep myself safe. And maybe there's some information that I don't know you can kind of take from it if you choose to. Because I could also be wrong on some things. And maybe I just ride a little bit silly, but whatever. That's all right. I guess one last thing I could touch on is counter steering. Um, counter steering comes a little bit more into play once you're at those higher speeds. I'll try to give you guys one last example of counter steering and then probably call it. So again, right here, because I'm going slow, I'm not really counter steering. Counter steering really comes into play when you're going a little bit faster. If I push, left I will go left if I push right I will go right because I'm going fast enough when you're at super slow speeds you turn it like a normal bicycle if I do that now I get that weird wobble and it's very uncomfortable yeah guys so I don't know this is just kind of a yap sesh uh, I don't have anything in particular that you know works best for me or whatever try out all these things they'll all probably keep you a little bit safer especially if you're new um, and learning these things kind of helped me grow as a rider a lot quicker and avoid, you know, any serious accidents so far. So, I don't know. With that being said, probably cut it here. Um, I didn't even really talk about highway. Highway is something entirely different. But overall, I'd say highway is probably a little bit easier. There's less going on. I'll probably make a separate video on highway. I don't even really ride my bike on the highway all that much. If I had a sport bike, maybe, but not this thing. So, yeah, guys. Um, like, subscribe, I don't know. Do all that cool shit. Peace.